Yeah, I'm so excited to show you. I got 100 for small test guy, 25 over 25. I was so afraid because my result was getting worse and the SPM was nearing at that moment. Luckily, I got an A in SPM. So Adika and hi everyone, I'm Lily, I scored 10 A's in SPM and currently I'm studying under Petronas Scholarship. Today, I am going to show you guys all my results from Form 4 until SPM. Let me briefly tell you what you will get from this video. So I'm going to show you all my results and tell you how I went from AC to an A in SPM. Most importantly, I will share you the mistakes that made me fail to get an A plus in SPM so that you won't repeat my mistakes. Here is the timestamp, just keep to the part that you are interested in. Thank you so much to Trivikram and Trends for requesting this video. Okay, now I'm gonna show you my results. Tracking tests or small tests in my school. I got 34 over 42 and give me a total of 81 which is an A. Next, this is during form 4. Got a 44 over 50 and 88 which is still an A solid. Alright, another small test, 26 over 28 and give me a total of 93 which is an A plus this time. Now this one, I am so excited to show you. I got 100 for small test guy, 25 over 25. Alright, we are done with the small test and let's move to the exam and we start with the form 4 peperiksaan awal tahun. I started my form 4 pretty well, got a 97 which is an A plus for peperiksaan awal tahun. Now this is where my result drop, only got 71 for peperiksaan pertengahan tahun. Look at that, I started to have a lot of questions that I don't know how to solve and I even left some questions blank. Akhir tahun, I still remain with 71 which is an A minus and let me show you. As you can see, my paper one actually is not that bad, 71 over 80. But why I could only get an A minus? Here's the answer. My major problem is paper two. I only got 56 over 100, and this really pulled my grade down. And now let's move to form five, starting with the paper exam awal tahun. 32 over 40 for paper one, and 31 over 60 for paper two. I'm just gonna be really honest, guys. My paper two was really bad. Look at that. Make sure you watch until the end of the video if you don't want to get this kind of result guys. I'm gonna tell you all my mistakes. So as you guys can expect, that's my result for Paparixan all tahun 63B. Alright now pertengahan tahun, let's see. <sighs> 59 guys, it's C. This time my paper 1 result also fell. 47 over 78 only and my paper 2 as usual 58 over 100. And now my trial exam 51 C, 39 over 80 for paper 1 and 52 over 100 for paper 2. I was so afraid because my result was getting worse and the SPM was nearing at that moment. Luckily, I got an A in SPM. My results for small tests are better than the bigger exams like Peperiksaan Awal Tahun, Pertengahan Tahun, Akhir Tahun, and Trial Exam. There are three factors that might explain this. Okay, first, in small tests, we normally have a few questions on me and they do not follow the actual format of SPM. So, when I suddenly set for bigger exam like trial, they really follow the SPM format and we have more questions compared to the small test. So I got really panicked and I lost my confidence. I couldn't perform well. The lesson here is don't solely rely on what your teacher gave because no matter what, you still have to go back to the actual format and familiarize yourself with all the questions and format of SPM. Second, small tests only include two or three chapters or even worse sometimes one chapter so you don't have to spend more time to prepare. Maybe two or three day preparation is already enough. But when it comes to a bigger exam like trial, something bigger, something more serious, they include all the chapters which means you need more time to study and you need to master in all chapters. So study earlier to master each of the topics. Before the exam, always ask your teacher what chapters will be covered and then start working on mastering all the chapters. Don't wait until last minute. Don't wait until last minute. Okay, the third one. 
I did the same preparation for small tests and exam, which is wrong. I always do topical questions on me, no matter I'm preparing for the small test or bigger one like trial. For small tests, yes, you can do that. But when it comes to exam like trial, pertengahan tahun, akhir tahun, you need to do all the topical questions earlier and focus on kertas model when the exam is approaching. This will train your brain to solve all the questions from different chapters under a short period of time instead of just focusing on few chapters. These are the things that I realized earlier and corrected it before SPM. So I went from AC to NA in SPM. I have two more additional tips and two most important tips that I learned during Form 5 that really helped me to go from AC to NA. These two things are like the core things that really helped me to improve my confidence at the time, improve my results and eventually got an A. First, know yourself. For example, if you know that you are weak in certain chapters, then you need to put more effort in doing topical questions for the chapters. But in my case, after trial, I just got to know that my weakness is paper 2. Paper 2 always bring my score down, always bring my grade down. So I started working more on paper 2, spending more time doing questions in paper 2. And yeah, eventually I got a better result. Next one is watch YouTube videos. Of course, you stumble upon a lot of questions that you don't know how to solve. I didn't search on the internet, I didn't search on YouTube for any solutions of my problems. But thanks to Ahong and ASEAN, I learned this from them to watch YouTube videos to solve your maths questions. There are a lot of channels that are really helpful for SPM students, for example, at Maths Kacang, Y to MX plus C, and one more, it's Tan Yan Ju. So here's the thing. I only scored an A solid for my SPM. So I went to my friend who scored an A plus and asked them what they did. From there, I saw my mistake. I'm going to tell you all the mistakes that I have done so that you can avoid them. We have the guy who shared secrets in Marine Class Bus. Come on, Mukris, I know it's you. Mukris is a patronal scholar going to pursue environmental science in the UK next year. Chris said the most helpful tip for him is doing theory first then start increasing difficulty of questions. For admits, I really think quantity over quality when the word things are advised. So Mukis is trying to tell you that once you do a lot of questions, you are going to understand it more and there comes the quality. So the quality always follows the quantity when it comes to maths questions. And his advice is don't sleep in your class and pay attention. It's sufficient to get you an A. So if you want to get at least an A, just don't sleep in class and don't skip class. Okay, next one we have Zahir Zaidi guys. Zahir is also a patronal scholar going to pursue chemical engineering in the UK next year. According to Zahir, you need a deep understanding on algebra because a lot of questions require that. If you are aiming for A or A+, try to understand the basic concept behind every topic. Apply and relate all of those concepts by drilling with past papers. Then, try to time yourself finishing a full paper at least once a week. Check your answer after finishing the papers, not before. Then do the correction and make sure you don't repeat the same mistakes. And next, we have Tang Lee guys. Tang Lee is going to pursue marketing and trading in the UK next year. Let's see what Tang Lee has to tell us. The most helpful tip is the collection of good questions. I only revised this plus my notes which includes all the formula before exam. While doing exercises or past year questions, you can skip the questions that you already know and look for difficult questions. And Tangley's advice for you all is, try to reduce your careless mistakes. Do all the questions in textbooks. Skip the questions that you already know how to. Here's the wonderful thing about Tangley. She did all the questions in textbook during her SPM year. But her advice for you all is just skip the questions that you already know how to do because you might short of time. After listening to all their tips and advice, I came up with four conclusions. These are also the reasons why I couldn't score an A plus in SPM. First, I did not do time tests. 
So every time during exam, I will have problems where I did not have enough of time to finish all the questions and ended up leaving some questions blank. Sit in a place with your timer and then start doing papers like the actual exam. By doing this, you will know which questions from which chapters that you might take longer time to finish and you will know how to allocate your time accordingly, especially during the exam. After I came to college, I started doing this time test and what I realized is the best tip to save time is do the questions that you can solve really fast first and followed by the questions that might take longer time. When you keep on doing time tests, you will know how fast you can solve each question and another thing you will learn to solve questions faster and finish all the questions during exam so you won't be panicked again because now you know how to allocate your time my second mistake I did not do enough of trial papers and past papers. My friends did a lot of this and some of them finished all the trial papers from all states. For this reason, they can see the trend of the questions and they know what are the popular questions and mostly asked questions in exam. Since you all do not have a lot of past papers due to the changes in the syllabus, I would advise you to do a lot of the trial papers from all states. Do as many as possible. Okay, next, one day before exam, what should you do? My friend Tang Lee compiled all the good questions and challenging questions or even questions that you did wrong chapter by chapter. So one day before exam, after you read all the notes, just go through these questions. Chris once told me, one day before exam, don't do questions anymore. Think about what will happen if you fail to solve the questions that you are trying to do one day before exam. You are going to be very panicked. So one day before exam, just go through all your notes and also the good questions that you already compiled by chapters. If you have more time and you don't know what to do, then you can go through all the questions that you already done, especially trial papers. In video, I explained how I did my notes for maths. So if you haven't watched it, you can watch it here. Tangly already told us that don't do the questions that you already know how to do. Save your time. Just move to the other questions that are more difficult and challenging. So I'm going to stress it here again. We need to study smart. Do a lot of questions with different styles and require different concepts. I think we have come to the end of the video. Today's video is not only for you. It is also for me. I got to learn from our friend Tangly, Zahir and Mukris. Thank you for contributing your ideas into this video. Thank you for willing to share your tips. So now we have 2,000 members in our small family. Thank you so much everyone. I hope we can continue to support each other like this. Sending all my love to you. Bye!